Yo, what up, though? This is B-Boy Rich. I'm DJ Butter, y'all. And it's Funky, Funky Fresh, Fresh in the, the Flesh podcast. podcast. Special guest in the house uh, today. Yes, yes, Oh, yes. she's smiling. <laughs> 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 we got Crystal Franklin right here, y'all. What up, the world? And see friends coming live in direct yes, from the yes. Funky Fresh in the <laughs> Fact <laughs> podcast. Yes. What up, though? What she, up, though? She's the niece of the, of the queen of Detroit, <laughs> the queen of soul, Aretha Franklin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we back. Funky fresh in the flesh the right way. You know? Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. So um tell the people um you know, your story growing up in Detroit. Um I know you from from the Bronx area. From the Bronx down. <laughs> Six mile in Stansbury. Six mile. Born and raised right there on yeah. that corner house. Where? Born in Sinai, not Sinai Grace. Right. But Sinai. Sinai. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um matriculated due to parochial, and the DPS system. I graduated from Mumford, but I'm at heart a Catholic school girl. I went wow. to Jesu, spent a little time at DePores till they kindly asked me to leave. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. You know, right? that's a whole another story. Yeah. Um, I graduated from Wayne State with a BA in marketing. Um, never bought a book, never had to. I was born with it. So I right. I always encourage people to do what they're born, you know what I'm saying, to do. Right. I was not going to be a doctor. Wasn't going to be no lawyer. Right. Not a ballet person either. Right. So I just did what I, you know, I came into the earth. Um, my aunt was already the queen of soul. Right. I had no control over it. Um, not only was she the queen of soul, my grandfather, Reverend C.L. Franklin, yes. was the greatest orator, you know, of all times when yes. it comes to the preaching and, you know, relaying messages. Um, so I got blessed in that aspect as well. Right. Uh, my father... Is from Memphis, but he, Detroit is his home, graduated from Northern. Um, That's Aretha's brother. My father, right, right. Cecil, yep. So um, he graduated from Morehouse, so I was a Morehouse daughter from the time. I knew nothing about what Michigan State and U of M, right. all I knew was Morehouse, wow. deeply rooted wow. in the blackness. My daughter graduated from Howard, I attended Alabama A&M, but um, my father had, uh, I was lucky, so my father was... Aretha's manager for 25 years. Right. He was born in, you know, raised in Detroit. So he had his street part yeah. to him too, which was the greatest part of it all. Cause I never went to a mall till I was 16. Mm. Cause you don't know about that. You know, right. the booster would come the to booster, our house. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I had that aspect. His best friend was Smokey Robinson. And then they grew up in the neighborhood where Motown was starting to develop right before. So right. all of the artists would come to our house. You know, like we had the hot spot. So, I again, I was I was lucky. I had the hood. You know, I was the street thing going on, with, you know, right. with the Bronx. And uh, my mother was a prim and proper D.C. girl, mm -hmm. you know. And my father, you know, he could talk you under the table. Right. Very educated. Uh, but he had his hood side, so that just kept me, you know, real rounded. And the greatest gift of all is I'm from the D, baby. Right, no doubt. right. No doubt. I can go anywhere in the world and hold a conversation and not feel less than right. or, Indeed. you know, that kind of right. thing. So that's my story. <laughs> you mentioned uh, Jay Zoo. Um, uh, did you know Proof uh, from D12 went to Jay Zoo? Uh, Deshaun Houghton. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Don't play with me. Right. Yes, of course I knew right. Deshaun. <laughs> um, we used to share so. <laughs> we used to have to take our own. I've never shared this story either. Wow. Right. We used to take our lunches to school. They didn't provide lunches for us. And um, I didn't eat pork. He didn't eat pork. Wow. And he used to have beef pepperoni in his lunch and he used to share it with me. Wow. <laughs> uh, <that's... laughs> I still got my last. And our birthdays were like a day apart. Wow. And I still have my last email that I sent to him right before his passing. But yeah, of course I knew Deshaun. Aaliyah uh, was there too. Aaliyah wasn't there when I was there. Okay. She okay. she came along after we did. Yeah, Deshaun would. So my whole name is Crystal Robin Aretha Franklin. And only people who grew up with me or went to school with me knew that. And one day we were in the parking lot on 696 in the parking lot where the Farmer Jack was we were coming out right. the bank he called my whole name i was like who <laughs> my whole turned around it was That's him he was like oh my god <laughs> so i don't know him mr sean holden i know him. Right. proof right yeah, yeah. but yeah rest in peace anyway. proof yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so funny that i heard you guys um speaking a little earlier 
when you were recording your other podcast and you were speaking about, um, you know, just different things in the entertainment world and all that kind of right. stuff. And one of the things, even with Deshaun, because his father was a writer for Motown, exactly. we grew up in a whole nother world. We we grew up we grew up in the thing. We didn't just get dropped in the middle of it and all of a sudden our people were stars. We grew up in the thing. So we have a different perspective. People who grew up in this world have a different perspective than those who were on the outside. Right. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the things that we could share together, especially since he was living in the world. And I'll never remember when they were performing at the Grammys. We were at the Grammys at the same time. I called him like, what y'all doing? And at that time, <laughs> Eminem had just become hot. So they were doing all of the big parties. Oh, Crystal, call me in 20 minutes. We're going to hook up. I, mean, I was like, all right. 20 minutes later, he in the middle of a party. Tell me, I can't hear you. Yeah. Call me back. <laughs> so, you know, we were able to move in circles and do things, you know, as grown people. Yeah. Right. That we couldn't, that we'd have never imagined as, you know, kids. Wow. Yeah. That's funny. Wow. So you, you was talking <laughs> earlier about like, um, and even in this story, you talked a little bit about the behind the scenes stuff that go on, like from the production and everything. How was that experiencing that as a kid? I'm a backstage kid. Okay. I'm a backstage kid. You right. know what I'm saying? I learned, you know, about sound checks and the grip guy and the light man and the truck drivers and the, you know, the the ticket counter and the house and, you know, just. <laughs> so people laugh at me because I'm going to be honest with y'all. One, right. It was just two crazy things. One, I never wanted anybody to know Aretha was my aunt. Right. Because when I was like in the sixth, seventh grade, people be like, Aretha ain't your aunt. And at that point in my life, I was like, okay. Right. What do you want me to do? Well, all right. I'll find it. Right. But once she passed, don't laugh at me, y'all. But I really didn't understand the impact. Mm. She was just mm-hmm. my aunt. Wow. Right. Like, seriously, my aunt, like the one that got on everybody's last nerves, like that, she was that wow. aunt for me. Um, she was my father's last surviving sibling. So we spent way much more time together than I even spent with my father. I went on the road with her as a young person. Um, she took me places that everyone doesn't take their nieces and nephews, even in the business. Um, inaugurations. Like, I was right there with the bomb inauguration. Like, oh. He right there, I'm right there. Right. Um wow. just anything that you Grammys, uh, Vanguard Awards, just anything that you can imagine that everybody's wildest dream to go to to walk red carpets, like I've done all of that. And to me, it was just like, eh. But for everybody else, it was like, Oh man, I wish Aretha was my aunt. No, y'all don't. Cause this is not <laughs> an easy world to navigate. Mm-hmm. Um, again, being from Detroit, living here made it a lot easier. Um, so I'm all, again, I'm always thankful for that, but the whole living in the back, the, <laughs> so one of the <laughs> things about living in the situation I lived in and now that my aunt is gone, um, it's very hard for me to watch a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So for instance, Mary J. Blige had a 25th anniversary celebration of my life. And at the end of it, they rapped and they went backstage and they were praying and do. I was sitting there crying, and I'm like, "Why am I crying?" Because I can right. remember those times after a show, waiting for her to change her clothes, waiting for her to pay everybody, waiting for the people mm-hmm. who paid to come um, get that special time with her, or waiting right. like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> Let you know the bodyguards would be like, "Crystal, she don't want nobody to come in." What? <laughs> come on, baby. Like it's just right. to relive all of those kinds of things um, is very difficult. Because I could see if maybe she had died when I was younger, right. but I had a lot. I was 47 years old when she passed. Wow. So that's a lot right. of time to be with somebody. Um, and just to live in a world where only 2% of the world gets to get a chance to live in. She was the upper echelon of celebrity. No she could pick right. up the telephone and call, yeah, I want the world to spin to the left. Okay, let's figure out how we can make that happen. Like, anything and everything you can imagine. We stayed at places like the Wardos of Astoria, Trump International, uh, all of the best hotels, all of the best restaurants. So when I hear all these, like, no disrespect to you guys, but, like, these girl bloggers and everybody who got all these big voices and they saying, if I was... And so, you, you, you're you reaching, you want to be able to go into a room where everybody knows your name. Right. But can you really handle that? Right. right. Everybody can't handle it. What, what type of pressures you think people should look out for, like, dealing with that, like, the celebrity part of it? Like, 
Because we see a lot of people just crack, like they just break down. The expectations. Okay. The expectations of what people expect of you or what they expect from you or right. how they expect for you to act is greater than anything that you can mm-hmm. imagine. People right. aren't expecting for Aretha Franklin to be at Walmart shopping for jeans and T-shirts. Right. But in order for her to hold on to her well, she also has to be smart enough to know that I, I can't go to Bur- Burdoff Goodman's into Saks for everything. Like, right. it has to be a balance. Right. And a lot of times people just go to the total left. They don't have the balance anymore. Right. Um, one of the things, too, is like your friendships start to change because if now I am on, I'm working uh, six months out the year in a whole nother atmosphere and a whole nother world in which you live in and you still doing your nine to five job, what are we going to relate to? So now you start right. to gain friends in an unreal world because these are not your friends. Right. These are people that you work with. And sometimes it's hard for them to uh, separate that. So okay. if you're a new rapper and you, you get thrust into the world and right. now you sit in a room with Cardi B and with Offset and all these people, now you want to start to mimic what they're doing. You want to start to join into the things that they're doing instead of just... Right. Being yourself, right. doing the things that got you there, now you become so involved in everything that they're doing, you lose your own self, and you lose your right. own identity, and then your friends start to turn on you. So once your friends start to turn on you, then what do you do? Because right. you don't have anybody to, you know what I'm saying, hold your ground. And, and to, I mean, you just see so many of them just, you know, go, you were like, but she was cool, and now right. she too good, she don't want to talk to you, she don't have nothing to say to you. Right. But unfortunately... Again, being from Detroit, yeah, I, I, girl, back. <laughs> you ain't got. I can't. I right. could never move in an uppity situation because I'm all. I have my friends and my families that are always going to just bring me back oh, to boy. life and right. hold me down, right. no matter right. what. Um, I feel sorry. Okay, one thing I will say is that the internet is a beautiful place <laughs> when you're trying to sell product. Right. It's a horrible place when you're trying to live in a celebrity life. All we had was wow. Jet and Essence when I right. was growing up. They could write a little blog, yeah, you know, right. say what they want to say. Six months later, they forgot about it. This right, right here, these things so live different. forever. Right. Yeah, it's right. different. They live forever. So, um, and everybody has an opinion, and everybody can click and bait. Because before, unless you bought the Jet or the Ebony or the Essence or whatever it was, you didn't really know what was going on in these people's lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, to be honest with y'all, I'm not even going to lie. If I had to live in what was going on with my family... In the internet world, oh, I'll be a crackhead somewhere. Wow. Because it's too much exposure. It's too much exposure. Yeah. It, it leaves room for everybody to have something to say. Right. Everybody got something to say. Right. I can't go to a doctor's office with somebody having something to say. Right. You know, you can't, right. when my aunt passed, it, I had to take six weeks off work. I couldn't even go to work because everywhere you turn, share a story with y'all. So my aunt passes. And we trying to beat off Jesse Jackson from going on the news. Oh, Can you quit going on the news, please? Because nobody knows where she lives at. But as long as you're going to stand on right. the riverfront, everybody going to figure out where she's at. So my aunt passes, and we have to take my daughter to Howard. She's finishing up school. We had a plan. We were going to, as a family, because we, we have to let the world know, right? Right. So give us 45 minutes. Right. From the moment she passes, give us 45, and then let the world know. So we're we're going, we're driving down 94, the heavens open up, it rains, we like, oh Lord, we get the phone call, she's passed. So no, we we at that point we couldn't react because we were in um get ready to move. We got to park the car, da da da, get on the plane. As soon as we got on the plane and closed the door, we just started bawling. And we got that wow. first text. And we knew the world knew at that point, right? So now we get off the plane. We're at Howard University, and at their at their DC at um DCA Reagan National Airport, they have monitors over top of the tar, uh, baggage claim. Right. <laughs> baggage cl- on top of the baggage claim is my aunt and dad. I'm a roasted and wrote a book, and I can't remember the other thing that was going on. Guess whose house we stayed at while we were in DC? Mm-hmm. I'm a roaster. Wow. We go to Howard University trying to get housing. They got a big screen TV. Who on the front of the TV? Amarosa, Aretha, and whatever else is going on. So normal people wouldn't be able to handle that kind of pressure. Right. But because I was born into the thing, and we've always been a media-conscious family. Right. I had media training from the moment I was born. Don't cry like that. Cry like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, like I said, 
everybody can't handle this. Right. Right. Everybody, this is not a life that everybody would. You want the you want the money right. and the access, but you really don't want the fame. Right. <laughs> but that's what you really want. <laughs> You you mentioned like you had to keep people from talking or showing where she lived at, and so how do y'all handle that? Like, is it like it's certain people in y'all circle? Is it like non disclosures or things like that? Or, but you can't control everybody, right? You can't control everything. But my aunt always lived all the way up until her last two residents were uh, gated communities. Right. Her last two residents were gated communities. Before that. She didn't live in a gated community just because, no disrespect, but you know we don't cross the Mason-Dixon line, which is eight. Right, mm-hmm. right, yep. So we didn't really have to worry about the the common folk coming out there. Right. So that's what kept that going. But when she lived at the riverfront, of course, that just opened it up to everybody. Right. Um, But yeah, so once we got to the riverfront and things started to take a turn, that's when it became more noted that she was there. You know, people knew she was there. Right. Um, but she always lived in a, the, like I said, the, her last two residents were gated community, so she didn't have, people didn't have access to her like that. Right. What, right. what is, um, when was the first, like, um, moment you, you said, man, my, my auntie, uh, is who she is, you know, as a child, like, um. Uh, never as a child when she died. Really? Wow. Never as a, she was my aunt. Right. It was just normal to you. It was, so she it was, was like, my aunt. I went to recording studios. Right. You know, the sound suite. Like, it was never... I didn't know this is that... I didn't know your daddy didn't pick you up and you went to the sound suite and Luther Vandross and Whitney Houston. I didn't know it was no... I didn't <laughs> right. know that's not what you did. Right. Right. <laughs> I didn't know. Right. And it wasn't... It, because what happened was when she passed... Um... <laughs> People started lining up outside the African American Museum at three o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. The day before they were even doing a viewing. I'm like, y'all out here at three, it's hot. Y'all out here at three right. o'clock in the morning. It's like, so I went over about three thirty, four o'clock in the morning and took them white castles and, and uh, water. Cause I'm like, there's no way y'all just gonna stand out here when we're not gonna feed you or, you know what I'm saying? Mm, Nothing. Right. So, and then I started to meet people who had never seen her in a concert in their life. Wow. I met a young lady who's right. from Amsterdam, Sharma Rose. We've become very good friends. She had never seen my aunt in a concert. She just called the hotel, happened to call the host hotel. Just everything was in divine order. She got on the same bus when we did the the music tribute, which was at Shane Park at the time. We struck up a conversation. I don't have a ticket to get in. Girl, come on in here with me. Wow. She had never seen my aunt. She came all the way from the Netherlands on a last minute ticket. So that wasn't a dollar ninety nine ticket she came on. Right. People came from all around the world and converged on our city. And when right. we did that, the the drive from the church to the cemetery, I was like, this can't be real. <laughs> it's about to be dark outside. Y'all still standing. I mean, they camped out, they barbecuing. People came out of the beauty shops, out the you know, the barber shops, they were coming out of the gas stations. I was like, right. Like, where else do they do this at? So, to be honest with you all, it really wasn't until she passed. Now, we would go places and people would be like, oh, anybody ever told you you look like Aretha Franklin? She'd be like, ha ha, no, but I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so, but it to, she was just my aunt. So, right. because I moved in those kind of places, like, it allowed me to have access to people and become friends with people because I'm not right. going to be like, oh my God, it's Mary J. Oh, I, right. look, I got her phone. I ain't know. Like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm, right. So that's one of the things, again, Detroit it's the, it balance, is yeah. my balance. Uh, yes, right. indeed. Now, if I was born in L.A. <laughs> yeah, or so been, been an L.A. Oh, girl, yeah. it would have been something different, different. You know what I'm saying? Right. But being from the D, going to Mumford, going to Jezu, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, getting kicked out of the porous. <laughs> <laughs> that gave me the balance, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. My friends is, you know, Bronx down. Right. My girl, you know, everybody on cruise, all the girls get pregnant at 16. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Like, the crackheads on the shore. Right. Prince Vince and them around the corner. Yeah. The right. girl Naima that won um, America's Top Model yeah. that very first cycle. Her father was Francisco Moore. They grew up around the corner from me as well. Right. So I knew her when she was a baby girl. My homeboy, uh, he used to have a pump ways over there. Uh, Prince the- Vince. With the dogs, uh, was it uh, Ali? What was his name? Yeah, I, 
There ain't no telling. <laughs> there ain't no telling. I mean, we had a cast of characters over <laughs> right. there. Yeah. That was a That's cast right. of characters yeah. for sure growing up over oh here. My God. Um, and even now, my best friend's daughter is Leah Jeffries, who's okay. now starring in the uh, Disney movie, the, the new movie, the Disney tri- trilogy. Mm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, right. like... Yeah, it's just normal to you. It's normal. Right. Like, it's nothing. Like... You know, it was sure. like uh, it was like moments to uh, when, when Blues Brothers came out and Aretha Aretha was in the movie. It was moments in our house where we were just like waiting for her to come <laughs> yeah. on. You know, so that I'm was... gonna give y'all a story about that. I got a story about everything. That's why I'm like they don't want me starting no podcast. <laughs> right. 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 So yeah. when the movie, we um, my father was. I have a picture, but I I'm not even gonna try to find it for y'all. But I have a picture from that particular time. Time um, in the picture is Jim Belushi. I'm on John Landis' shoulders. My my aunts, wow. everybody is in the picture. The the post lady, all of those ladies who sung background for her, yeah. we're all in the picture. I I am no teeth, you know what I'm saying? Flip, 80, <laughs> the 82 flip, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. Chocolate, little, little child. And I'm just like, <laughs> wow. That's I cool. had no clue. You see what right. I'm saying? What was going on at that time? But I'm going to tell you the craziest part was when John Belushi passed from right. the overdose, that affected me. Because I was like, I knew this man. Right. And I'm a little girl at the time. I don't know about no overdose. Right. Cocaine, what's that? Mm-hmm. But it affected me as a child because that was somebody that we knew. Right. You know what I'm saying? When right. Marvin Gaye died, he grew up around the corner from my my mother in Washington, D.C., but he was also friends of the family who rocked me to sleep right. that night. So all of these things are just like, 360 for me. You know what I'm saying? So, again, when I sit around and I listen to people who would love to be able to go in these same rooms and right. have people call their names are the same ones that you guys have no clue what y'all talking about. Right. Because only 2% of the world gets to live in that upper echelon of entertainment. Right. I mean, I've been in places that you'd be like, oh, my God. Like, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I would have loved to go to... um Oh, Studio 54. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'd just been a fly on the wall. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. That's yeah, wild. that's another place they could have the saying? internet. For... Baby, yeah. if the internet right. was alive, no. that place wouldn't have lasted two days. <laughs> right, right. Cocaine and, Bro, and boy, women on about... naked horses. Me, and... me too would have been right. back. Hey, oh, my me God. <laughs> they would have showed up at the door. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Just hearing, like, yeah, the impact your aunt had, I think, for, from from a fan standpoint, especially our generation, we related to her like we did our grandmothers because mm-hmm. that's who our, our grandparents our listened yeah. to Big and our aunts. aunts. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I yes. think it was like when she passed, it was like part of our history passed because mm-hmm. a lot of us lost our grandmothers before then. So yes. it was like, dang, this was the last thing I remember Grandma cleaning the house on Sunday listening to Aretha. Yeah, yep. and I, I feel like, and then not only that, um, the way that it was like your grandmother listened to Aretha and my grandfather. Right. But your mother listened to Aretha because yeah. she hit them, you know, she was the yeah. woe is me girl. You know, right. I ain't never loved a man. And you 17, you listen yeah. to this because your mother's listening to it. And you know what I'm saying? So that, that kind of carried with, you know, with us and that kind of thing. Right. Um, and now they've, you know, they're using her song. on For the sampling, it, yeah. They sampled it. And I was, when I remember hearing that song like, Seven, eight years ago, I was like, that's my aunt. And now to see it now, you know, I'm like, I was just waiting for the mm-hmm. moment that she reached. I, I just wish it wasn't a shake a booty moment. Right. But I was waiting for that moment for her music to now reach the TikTok generation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, it's been interesting, wow. to say the least. Well, it's funny. My grandmother's name was Maddie, and one of my favorite Aretha songs is Try Maddie's. <laughs> And people were like, what song is that? And I'd be like, you just got to hear it. Listen, my aunt so, made so much music, I ain't even heard yeah. it all. And I'm not going to sit here and try to lie and tell right. you I didn't heard it all. Yeah, I she got, it. yeah, she heard it. Her Man, catalog, she, catalog is ridiculous. Is crazy. Yeah. It's probably five, six hundred songs. And I'm thinking to myself, like, how did you remember the, the words to any of this stuff? <laughs> and, you know, different That's versions funny. of the songs. Right. And, yeah, so, yeah, I, I have no clue how she, uh, it's amazing. That's all I can say. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, I have met her on. Um... I used to work at Jacobson's. Oh, uh, that was our spot. Yeah. Uh, Chris, go in there yeah, and give me the whole <laughs> <laughs> We go in there and shop till we, you know, these yeah. little young girls, I'm going to get the bag. Baby, my yeah. aunt was the bag. Yeah. She would come right. in and drop. You know, it'd be a Christmas tree over in the corner. I want all of it. She Lights. came there through Christmas time. See, all the time. All she of my gifts a, came from Christmas. She had the fur on. She, uh, I had wrapped her gifts for her. 
You know, I used to rap the gifts. You probably rap one of mine. Yeah. That I probably didn't want at the time. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? And everything. Yeah, you know she what I'm saying? Funny. You know what's so wild? Because everybody, she mean, dog. When you see her, she mean. She was so nice to me, man. She was, yeah. she was so nice. If you me. come, if your energies are wrong, that's what anybody. Yeah, right. Of course. right. Anybody. Yeah. I don't care who you are. The yeah. school teacher, the bus driver. If you show up with bad energies, you're gonna receive. Yeah, they gonna re- person gonna reciprocate the totally same right. bad energies. But she gave me a good tip. And of everything. course, yeah. That was her. That was yeah. that was her thing. You know what I'm saying? Shopping was one of the ways. Like like we connect. I met Ralph Lauren, the Ralph Lauren, wow. the right. little polo man Ralph Lauren. Right. Shopping with her in the Hamptons. Wow. wow. And he looked like you, Ralph Lauren. <laughs> wow. Shoes ran over, but they probably about forty five hundred dollars shoes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Jeans rolled up. He had his little button up polo shirt on with the other one on top. That's how they do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Who go to the Hamptons? How I many? Yeah. Niggas, you know, been to the Hamptons. Yeah, Might have yeah. been two, three, four times. <laughs> right. The Hamptons. You don't go to no Hamptons. Mm-hmm. Them the same ones, you know. Taraji talk. You, you been to the Hamptons? Right. Why you worry about driving? Right. You been to the Hamptons? Right. You know, so that's what I'm, I just be like, oh my God, these people, I guess. What what you piece know. of uh, move what 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 art piece, movie, uh what you suggest for the youth to watch to study y'all family history? To be honest, there isn't one piece of thing to watch. What I would tell people to do is at least listen to one of my grandfather's sermons. Mm-hmm. Um, just to understand where she gets her traditions and like, because my aunt was very old school. Like right. we were shopping one year at Fair Lane, school clothes, and she called my mother like, Can Chrissy wear pants? <laughs> I'm like, Lady is eighty seven. <laughs> you right. know, you know can Chrissy wear pants to school? She was very, very traditional, very right. old school type of, you know, situation. Um <laughs> she never really saw me as a 40-year-old mother. She just right. still saw me as that little, little you know, girl. her little girl because I was the last of the grandchildren. Mm. So every, they just still saw me as the little girl. And it was only two girls. It was me and my cousin Sabrina, and she had her four boys. Right. And um, it was another, I had another male cousin as well. So I was like her baby doll growing up. You know, I'm going to put her on all these. And my mother was like, if she buy one more dress. So um, I suggest that people at least get to one piece of my grandfather's sermons. Watch Amazing Grace because that'll give you the foundation of of her singing and her spirituality. And then I would say um, you would have to listen to a piece of her music from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Right. Catch you a 90s tune too. But if you just take your time one time and listen to one album, I don't care which album it is because each one – contributed something different. Right. But if you just took your time and even if you started with one song from each decade and just listened to it and just listened to how her voice evolved, um, it's amazing. Cause like the stuff when she was younger, the voice was just so clear and pure. And then um in the in the eighties it was I'm proving something. I'm still here. I'm still hip. I'm with George Michaels. I'm with the rig I'm doing stuff with Lauren Hill like you know what I'm saying? So and then of all of the things she's ever did is Nessa and Dorma. Mm. When she did that performance yeah. at the Grammys, who else going to be able to do that? Right. In 24 hours. <laughs> no. You know, I, I always yeah. thought um, that a rose is still a rose. It's, it was kind of hip hop. It was. Yeah, yeah that it was, was. It was yeah. real dope Even to see like, that, you know? So over the summertime, I was at the Aretha, and um, Dog Pound was there. And Flavor Flav showed up. Mm. He was like, I loved your aunt. Remember I did a song with her? I'm thinking to myself, like, my auntie had lost her mind doing a song <laughs> with Flavor Flav. She was, he was like, I was in the video. Um, I was like, oh, my God, that's just, you know, that's just wild that to even think. Right. You know? And, and, and in my eyes, you know, I don't discredit any artist, any singer. But the thing about my aunt was everybody loved her. Right. Yeah. Even you talk to you know young Droa, the rest she of like, these. She right. like she belonged in our home. Like yeah, your, everybody. Your, your aunt, your aunt was like the soundtrack for the black culture. Yeah, yeah. Like it was that. Mm. It was like this is my safe space. This is again, it's like grandma, right? Mm-hmm. So it was this safe space. It was like you you can be with the the hardest dudes, but you listen to some Aretha, they might. They might look at you a minute funny, but then they're going to be like, all right, I get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think that's where all the love comes from, at least for our generation. 
the older generation, they they had no choice but right. to love her. Cause <laughs> right. that's back when people right. were singing for real. Right. So it right. was. I know it's so you know, sad how the music industry work now, and it's so funny because it's just is she has an interview and somebody asked her about auto tune. She was like, "What's that?" Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what's that? The whole thing about even having a um. The monitors in your ear. Yeah. She didn't they do that. They didn't have that back then. Yeah. Said, Turn these things up right here in the front because the sound man, he ain't got it right. He going to get docked $150. Mm. <laughs> yeah, $150. I remember hey. when, uh, when the, that uh, pink Cadillac, when uh, when that video was about to premiere, it was like a moment in our house. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. if you watch that, here we go again with another story. If you watch the video close enough, you can see my reflection in the wind, in the mirror. Wow. That was shot at Doug's Body Shop, which is no longer there. It was on uh, Woodward, Royal Oak area. Um, and if you look in the reflection, you can see my little chocolate face. And they edited me out because it was supposed to be a club scene. Oh, wow. And they're like, what are you doing in the video? Right. So they edited me out. But if you look in the mirror, I'm there. Wow. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Let me ask you this. Is it any singers probably in the past... 10, 20 years that you think can no. like, okay. <laughs> She's just like, no. no. I'm, I'm like, even And I'm not close, trying like, to be biased. Right. I'm not trying to be funny, but right. they don't study the craft. Right. They don't play an instrument. They don't have a range. They're not singing gospel. They ain't right. about to touch no opera. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, she, yeah. you, you, they're not doing no scatting. Right. They don't even know what a scat is. Right. You know, like, there are artists that could be great in their own, within this area in which we live in. Right. But to be the greatest of all times, that's that spot has already been taken. Right. You know, it's already right. been taken. It's, it's hard to, like, there'll never be another Prince or Michael Jackson. Right. There'll never yeah, be another yeah. Frank Sinatra, Aretha Franklin, Ella Fitzgerald. Like, there'll just never be those people again. Right. Can we recreate another Beyonce? Mm, with a fan and some great lights, yeah. Right. No disrespect. Hardworking young girl. Beautiful. Does her thing. But Beyonce is just Janet on the upgrade. Right. It's true. No disrespect. You know right. what I'm saying? I, I Listen. If I could buy body too bootylicious, I'd be bootylicious too. <laughs> Counting all the way to the bank. Right. Raising my kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's no disrespect. But just to be honest, because eh, in the grand scheme of things, uh, when you think of Aretha, you can think of ain't no way respect. You can just get the name. Woo, 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 yep. woo, 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 wham, wham. Then you'll when be you, like, oh, I forgot about one. Exactly. Then you but when you going. listen, when you start to name these other people, it's like, yeah, but. Yeah, okay. What's your favorite Do songs you... from your aunt? Um, Rocksteady. Mm. Oh, yeah, my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, anything, well, um, okay, so that's hard. So I love Rocksteady, but I have a liking towards Pink Cadillac because I was in the studio and it was recorded. Mm. Okay. So I can visually remember things about, you know, those kinds right. of songs. Um... I love the stuff. So Rocksteady, Ain't No Way, Never Loved a Man. And I think because those were the ones that she performed the mo mm -hmm. most and I was always there when she was seeing them. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I have a favorite. N my favorite performance of all time is Ness and Dorma, though. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, how'd she do that? Right. Do you think um, because... Of the era she grew up in, like because their their training and what was expected of them as singers was different than what it is now. You think that has a lot to do with it? Definitely, with because they don't do media training. They don't do right. sit like a lady training. They don't do um, intense vocal training, and they're right. not spending hours and hours with live bands. You know, everything is done with pre-programmed everything right. so they're not in the studio with the horn sections with the violin right. with the background so it it changes the whole elements of a song um it changes the whole vibe of the song right you know back then they would do duets yes one person would go in the booth and the other person would come out but they were still there together they right. were still feeling each other's energies um so that that's definitely made a difference i just don't think because it's so easy right. i hate to say that 
but because it's so easy, they don't right. they don't work as hard. Mm-hmm. They don't work right. as hard, you know. Yeah, your aunt had they had reel to reels and all that stuff. They dude. had the same. You couldn't build them in the studio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you had to right. have perfect pitch. <laughs> right. You had to hear when somebody else mm. was off. Right. You had to make sure the tempo was on. You see what right. I'm saying? Like it yeah. it went way. It was way more into the music than um what it is now because you can write the track. I can sing the background. Send right. it to you in Austria, and you do what you're gonna do, and then we send it to somebody else, and it it sound okay, right. but it surely wouldn't sound the same if we was all together at the same time. Yeah. You know, right. you know, producing and collaborating and getting the feel of the music. I mean, that was one of the things like with her and Luther Vandross when they was in the studio. It was like, cause you just listening to, right. and he can sing. He's singing her parts that he, you know, I want you to sing it like this, right. and then she going and do the Aretha part, you know, do yeah. Aretha to it, and he'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I just seen a picture of her and a Luther on Puritan. Uh, yeah, yeah, at at that one that's, sound. It was a, this. The, it was the sound, studio. Yeah, it was sound sweet. Yep, sound sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't like that one because that one was little. It wasn't as big as the one that was on. Um, what's off the freeway? Off ninety four, the one that they keep trying to revive. Was it United? Blues. Yeah, yeah. They that United was bigger, but I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I hated the studio. Period. Mm. Right. And I can't take loud music <laughs> right now to this day because <laughs> everything was done in 17,000 decimals over right. and over 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 <laughs> Let me <laughs> Let me ask you this. Did you ever sing? I can't sing my way out of the paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> so it did not automatically just... Did people ever try to get you to try or learn? I'm or? not about to embarrass myself. <laughs> Didn't y'all just hear me say That's I went to funny. school for marketing and never opened a book? I right. knew what my gift was, and singing wasn't it. All right. And oh, I, I'm not about to be talking. I'm Aretha Franklin's niece. <laughs> right. Oh, oh no. no. They, man, <laughs> they, they clown you to death. Crucify me yep. under. I've been asleep. Right. Crackhead right. slipped my wrist. Right. I'd be past the crackhead right. at this point. I've been wow. asleep my wrist. And you know what? To, I hate to say this. That is what happened to a lot of Motown artists. Yeah. A lot of. You, Smokey Robinson was my father's best friend, and he had nieces and nephews who wanted to be in the game so bad they didn't know what to do. They wow. committed suicide. You know what I'm saying? They became right. strung out on drugs. And when Motown left here, that really took a hit to a lot of people who right. just knew they were on the verge of being the stars. Mm-hmm. They had that excess and then when that excess left, they didn't they were lost. They didn't have they didn't know what to do. And that right. goes back to the thing about the fame too. It's like um uh you 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 reach a certain level. Say like a Christine Aguilera. We haven't really heard from her in a long time, right? right? But she reached a certain level of fame and for it she we haven't heard from her, but we know that it's an issue that she's not where she was. Right. That's that's a hell of a you here and now you just like regular. Britney, right. All of that. You know what I'm saying? That's right. that's what drives them girls crazy. You know what right. I'm saying? They went from access. Let me get a plane with an elephant, two naked horses, <laughs> <laughs> a gallon, a gallon <laughs> of you know what I'm saying? Right. A pit bull and a, a pizza. Right. With just chili on top. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You go from right. that to you can't even get nobody to answer your phone calls. Right. Yeah. That's the kind of that would that could, that could mess with your whole mental. You man, and that's insane. what happened. Look at Lauren Hill. Yeah. Crazy in the box rock. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yep. On the black hand side. What What do you? Th- so how? Like you, you mentioned like the other artists and their immediate family and everything. Do you think like um, them trying to be celebrities probably ruined them overall? Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Um. <clears throat> Again, with How only two percent, like, extremely. Everybody's child wants to be. Right, it happened in our own family. Right, I, I can name eight nine other families. Were Were the parents forcing them, or just like, oh my my niece or my sister? Or so, uh, in my case, in my family's case, my I never wanted. She wanted to protect everybody. Okay. She didn't want anyone to have to live what she lived. You know what I'm saying? Went through. Right. Um, which is a catch twenty two. It is what it is. Hindsight, was it the best move? Eh, I don't know. Right. But when you look at some of the other Hollywood people, because we, we we don't really realize that a lot of the celebrity actresses and actors that we know, their parents were old Hollywood, you know? Right. I, it's so many of them I can't even name, but it's like people you would need, like Drew Barrymore. Right. 
<laughs> that's yeah. a real case of crazy, you know? Right. So when you um <laughs> when you're trying to follow in those kind of things, right. like that, you know, and you never really reach that, that can right. drive you crazy too. Right. You know, that's a that's a lot of weight to, to carry on your shoulders. And then if you are the extreme opposite of what um your people are known for. So like with Quincy Jones, he has Rashida, who's an actress, but then his grandson yeah. is the you know, he's a, a rock, the, rap, whatever. Producer, but, hip-hop, right, but producer, he's so right. far from what his genre was. Right. But it worked for him. But right. everybody, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. Everybody doesn't get you know, Lenny Kravitz. Right. His mother was an actress. actress. He right. wanted to be a rock star. Then his daughter got to be an actress. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's, it doesn't happen like that for everybody. So, right. You know, some people just get lucky where their families will help you and, and lend, you know, give you the helping hand. But unfortunately, in our families, we don't kind of follow that that path. Perfect. Um, it's and not, not all kids just had a talent, neither. And that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody that don't have a lick. Like you look at uh like Michael Jordan's sons, they could play ball, but to a certain level. Right, they weren't. They wasn't, and, and that's a lot of pressure. And that's a lot of pressure. Right. Even if you in AAU, uh, <laughs> eight, you know the eight year old league, they want you to dunk, right? And put your tongue out and do poses and shit. Right. <laughs> like come, I'm eight. I'm still trying to figure out how to dribble the ball. Well, you right, know, so right. definitely that's that's a whole lot of pressure. And I I feel for for the young people, you know, who have to follow in those big right. Kobe's daughter, she was playing ball and looked, yeah. you know, we had to sacrifice for the greater good. Right. LeBron's boys, you know, like yeah. D Wade and his crazy family shit going on. Like, it's just <laughs> like, no, nah, I'm so right. glad that she I'm not bobbed. in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ding, ding, yeah. ding. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That's a whole nother yeah, world totally. out right. there. Right. That ain't nobody ready for that. And then when people, so just to touch on that particular subject, when people be like, oh, da 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 da. He don't live in that world. Right. He ain't coming to the hood to his cousin's house. Right. He don't. He don't live in no in our world. They live in a whole nother world right. that you don't even have a clue about. Right. So please don't speak on the world you don't know. Yeah, cause their their mindset is different. They don't have that anchor, like you said. They ain't coming back to uh, Stansberry. Absolutely not. Right. They don't have a reason to. Right. They they don't they can't even hold conversation with them in the hood because they don't have anything in common. Right. Which is sad. Yeah. Because right. you know, your father then is you. Now what do you do to continue the greatness? And if you're not in a position to carry on that greatness, you can fall and be back down to the common yeah. man. But if you don't have the tools to to, you know, resonate and to relate to a common man, then what do you do? Slit your wrist, become a crackhead. Right. So yeah. Detroit. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, let let me ask you this. So we talked about is is nobody else in this generation. Who's who's your favorite singer other than your aunt? Oh, I'm a SWV fan. That's <laughs> That's SWV, what? I'm a SWV. Oh, yeah. Now, now, Mary J. Mary J. That's my homie. Right. That's my because when her, my life came out of '92, I was a freshman in uh, college. Right. This girl named Cicely from Chicago was blasting it. We wanted to keep this girl play this one more time, but I know every <laughs> song backwards and forwards, frontwards and backwards. My poor child, she Mary J. Right. She do addition and she has WV. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I have my people that I definitely have connected with. Um, but to be honest with you, Mary J. is my Aretha. Mm. Wow. Mary J. is my Aretha. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, and, I can see that. Yeah, mm. Mary yep. J. is my. I, I turned 50 last year, so yeah. you know. Mary J. is my Aretha. I ain't Because I can see a lot of our grandkids yeah. growing up. Like, yeah, my grandma used, used to Used to listen that. to Mary J. Yeah. and SWV, definitely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and what I will say is so funny. Again, another story. Mary J., every time she would see my aunt, she'd just stand there and cry. I'd be like, girl, would you quit standing there and crying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. uh, girl, say hello. Uh, no, no. <laughs> say. That's oh, some shit. Jesus right. Christ. I Her, Jill Im- Scott, all of them. All they would do yeah. is stand there and cry. That's, That's it. Right. That's respect. Man. That was it. Mariah Carey, she'd be like, oh, my God. This is the queen. <laughs> she would never take her voice past right here. Right. She'd kiss her hand wow. and just stand there and they'd just. <laughs> right. <laughs> we we wild. heard some stories. We had, uh, what was it, Lamont Hayes was on the show. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I was in the studio and Aretha was there. 
And she was like, you want some chicken? Right. <laughs> yeah. Some Parks barbecue. How, how, was your, <laughs> right. how was your ex cooking? Yeah, she couldn't cook. She couldn't? That's an old legend in the game. <laughs> oh, okay. But, I mean, it, it's... She did cook me one time. My roommate and I came home from uh, school, and she cooked us Cornish hens, greens, cornbread, and some potatoes. She did good that time, but she wasn't the, the great cook. Okay. She was the great orderer. Okay. We would have everything in the world catered. Christmas, yeah, Thanksgiving, right. she was the great orderer, but she was not a good cook. Right. It's all right, though. You ain't got to be good at everything. Right. right. Well, t- talk about... um. Uh, Shane Park naming uh, the the venue after your aunt. What what you guys uh, what the family thought about that the acknowledgement of that? Um, I I don't have a problem with it. What I don't like is the disrespect from the general public. It's always gonna be Shane Park. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know what they named it after her for. Crazy. Right. What have you done in the world to change anything besides blab your mouth and drink and smoke? <laughs> I love it. I love it because um, it gives it an international status. Um, it's something to carry on her legacy uh, because it is our African American run uh, venue that that brings a little, you know, Genesis right. Choir. My aunt was definitely about, you know, Uplift the mighty rays, you know, power to the people. So that's that what that's what make it cool. And I got access. <laughs> that makes it even better. No, but I mean, I was going even when it was just Shane Park before they named it. You know, I was able to have access and do some things there, and um, I enjoyed it. I I enjoyed the park. I think it's one of the prettiest parks in the world. Um, it's is you know. It's different. Like I say, y'all, it's just so different. And then, again, I can't go anywhere in the world and no, no, right. I have nothing slick to say. And I got to sit there and just be like, so where was I at the other day? I was on the bus going coming from work. And the guy sitting next to me was scrolling. And on his scroll came my aunt. And they was talking about the house in Palmer Park. Yeah. And I wanted to be like, I don't know what you're reading that article for because that's a lie. But, you know, right. you can't, I can't, I can't do that because then he going to look at me like, well, what you know? And I'm not saying I don't want to reveal myself, but then I don't want to have to be like, oh, that was my aunt. Then the first thing he was like, for real? Like, I don't right, have to, right. I don't be having to go through all that. Right. So um, I love the fact that the park is named after her. I'm hoping that they start to do more international entertainment. I would like to see some Spanish, some reggae, some, you know what I'm saying? Like some different, some go-go, some hot, right. like some different kind of programming um, so we can come away from, just the same old monotonous kind of right. Wednesday weekend kind of thing. Um, I think they need to stay away from the young people because that's not a venue that kind of caters to that hip hop crowd. Right. Um, it's more a uh, adult atmosphere. So I would like to see it just do a, a, a some new things with the programming. Um, and I would hope at one point the city would invest more money so that they can uh, redo the seating, clean the bathrooms up, and it's not. What people have to understand is that a, that's a city park. That's not it, the right production runs it, but it's a city park and it's all city funded. Right. So unless the city is willing to drop a bag to get things done, they kind of like their their hands are really tied with a lot of the stuff. Um, but I do like you know now they've opened it up where I don't know if people notice, but the scrims, the projectors, the camp, the uh, what do you call it? the screens. Right. Uh, they had to get permission from Canada. Because the images can be seen in Canada. Oh, wow. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, things like that. That makes it more international. Yeah, you right. know, the whole atmosphere with the boats in the back. Um, right. You know, those kinds of things. And people like to come to the Aretha. They like the Aretha. They like the yeah, name, the Aretha. the Aretha. It carries something. You know, and in the in backstage, they have a picture of her. And everybody wants to take a picture with the picture, you know. And then if I go back and I'll be like, oh, I'm Aretha's niece. Oh, my God. My daddy loved your auntie. You know, stuff <laughs> like that. So um, it's cool to, you know, again, I got access. Right. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. Did um, you see? Go, go ahead. Go, right go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Did you see uh, Cash Dow uh, with her, one of her furs on... Um, before she performed, uh, she went to Diedrich and bought one of the furs that your aunt was getting customized. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, it was, yeah, I yeah, had no idea. Nobody a, tagged me or sent me that one. They yeah, sent me everything I, else I, with I, I right. sent it. To you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody else sent me that one. I actually Cash Dow was like one of my first celebrity purchasers. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. So my daughters again, 
so and then this is my line for Detroit too. Detroit is only two degrees of separation. Yeah. Two questions and everybody knows everyone. So my daughter's uncle's wife, so the auntie, who I grew up with around the corner from in the Bronx. <laughs> Right. She was doing some work with Cash Dial, and they were at the house. So when I first started selling the T-shirts, which is something we haven't talked about, when I first started doing my T-shirt line, she was one of my first celebrity p- people because it was like maybe like the first weekend I was selling T-shirts or whatever, and she was there. And I was like, oh, I, let me – and Tanya, don't kill me, but she was the one who was like, oh, um, I want you to see this T-shirt my girlfriend got, da, da, and she showed her the T-shirt, and then she did a little – clip thing for me, you know right. what I'm saying? And I still have it, but yeah, she was one of the first people who kind of got something from me. Um, now, I would like to run into her again, considering that you said she did the, you know, the fur thing, and just to give her like a dress or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, something new. Um, what I have done, though, is this will probably be my first year that I will no longer give items to celebrities. Give me the money and quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's no. some that's of your right. merch right there you yeah. got on, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is um Detroit. Please. ID Detroit, um, under the C Franks. That's my business name, C Franks. Okay. And this is um one of my t- well, one of my items because I don't just sell t shirts. And it's all about the city. So it's the people, places, and things that made Detroit hot in the sixties, seventies, and eighties. So um, Jingle Boots, The Scene, yeah. Earl Flynn, <laughs> right. Black Orchid, Male Fire, right. uh, you know black, what I'm saying? Black Orchid. <laughs> black Orchid. And it's so funny because hey. the Black Orchid is where all the men's eyes go first. The yeah. Black Orchid, oh, yeah. all the right. got the Black You be Orchid. looking, you be like, Black the Orchid, Orchid right. <laughs> Highland of Plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, and my tagline is one of a kind conversational pieces. So no matter where you wear it at in the world, it's going to start a conversation. And this is the uh, universal... You ain't from Detroit. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. You know, we can hold the what up, though, and if you don't respond in the right manner, we can hold you to that. Right. But if you're wearing this, then you be like, what's so-and-so? You ain't from Detroit. Yeah. Right. And yeah. don't yeah. try to play. And then one of the things about the merch game um, I noticed was that there are a lot of outsiders who sell Detroit merchandise who have just words, you know, Detroit, yeah. different languages, whatever, whatever your thing is, right? Right. But you ain't from Detroit. Yeah. You ain't from Detroit. Mm, you know what yep. I'm saying? You might have lived there for a minute, but I'm from Detroit. Uh, some people didn't even live there. They not they don't even represent Detroit until they go out of town. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I do um I'm one of the merchants down at the Eastern Market and I am the only uh so there are other black vendors that sell Detroit T shirts, but I'm probably one of the youngest down there. Um is one of the lady, two other ladies maybe. But when it comes to the t-shirt game for real, I'm like the only black girl outside. Of, I don't know what happened to the girls from Detroit Rocks. I haven't seen them in a while. Right. Um, but when I started in the game, I was like the only little black thing out there talking about I'm selling Detroit t-shirts. Everybody else was a white man. And I'm like, right. y'all ain't from the D. Come on now. <laughs> wow. Don't, don't try to That's perpetrate. Funny, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I got into the game. And then I'm, I cater to women. So right. I do dresses and, you know, cute little shirts like this. And I got remix sleeves, you know. I do my thing for the men, but I really cater to the women. That's that's my biggest customer, right. women. Yeah. Uh, your um your merchandise primarily is available online or you get in stores? <clears throat> online and I do pop-ups. Okay. African World, um, African American Museum. Um, uh, I'm working on some other things. Trying to, you know, get some other things. But um, unfortunately, in the cycle of life, my mother passed in November, so I'm trying to regroup. Wow. Um, I'm not even sure that. how I want to keep on going. Right. Not sure if I want to keep on going. My customers won't let it me does. stop. But I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying, see right. where I'm going with it at this point. I'm not interested in a brick and mortar. Right. Um, because I like being amongst the people. I like being out. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm over here. Like, no, I want to be over here, over there. So I do enjoy doing the pop-ups. I'm at the Easter Market. I'm at You Gotta Have It. Um, you know, I got a little core group of women that we kind of do pop-ups with. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of, you know, do he, he, do things here and there. Now, I'm not going to lie. I don't do everybody's pop-ups. No, sir. Okay. I don't do everybody's pop-ups. You're not going to charge me $150 to think I'm supposed to bring right. my customers to help sell to your other 900 vendors right. you got. Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. And I'm not going to pay you $150 for the same space that I can get at the Eastern Market on mm-hmm. my Sundays right. with way more foot way traffic. More, right. Don't don't play me. Please don't, because we're not going to do that. So, yeah. <laughs> That's right. What's next for the estate? 
Oh, what y- what y'all got um, coming on? I I am um separate from the estate. Mm-hmm. I'm a sole entity of my own. I am working on a nonprofit to celebrate uh my family as a whole. With okay. the passing of my mother, um now that is my mother, my father, and all of his siblings have passed from cancer. And I was diagnosed with skin cancer in 2015. So I'm working on a nonprofit that's going to cater for um, young people um, whose parents have either transitioned or going through some kind of cancer treatment to allow them to experience the um, backstage. So that's that's what I'm working on. Um, I'm gonna do some things with the Pistons. I'm gonna do some things with the Boys and Girls Club because um, at the core of my being, I am a community. Um, I belong to the community. My right. grandfather was a big community person. So I, um, I've i always volunteered, so I'm going to get back to that. Um, that's like a really happy spot for me, and I love the young people, even though I want to strangulate them right now because they are <laughs> so lost and turned out. Yeah, right. But I'm just hoping that, you know, the ones that are, are willing and, and have an open mind are, are ready for some, you know, some different things. But um, I'm going to do whatever possible that I can to always carry the Franklin name with style and grace and always right. communicate um, grace, graciousness, and thankfulness because I'm just thankful because I could have been born into the raggedy of the raggedy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Every morning I wake up and I'm just grateful because I had a charmed life. Yeah. You, know? hey, you you mentioned something. Or you went. You said you wanted the kids. You want to introduce them to backstage. So backstage is show business. Yes. Because a lot of people don't understand. It's a lot of money being made behind the scenes. The 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 sound man, the light like, man. The boom operator, the person who the the security people, right? Um, it's so much money to be made because, <clears throat> just say for instance, with uh, some artists, they come out every two years, right? Um, so that means for two years, they're sitting dormant, right? Because they've made you know their money, but the truck driver man, right? He just made three times as much money as they the artist just made because he gonna keep on going, right? The production team who does the lights and the sounds and the scrims. And now we've gotten to such a digital world. You know, yeah. you're saying it's a whole new digital game out here that people can get into. Um, the wardrobe, the makeup, the hair. Uh, it just it's just so many other aspects. The the camera guy, like there's not right. a lot of black camera people in this world. Right. Um, we we are now becoming more visible on the front side of the camera, but behind the camera, it's not that many people that's doing that. I mean, when you look, I just happened to be down at Ford Field when they were getting ready for one of the Monday Night Football games. Right. It's all of these production trucks. I, I ain't seen nobody black back there. Wow. So you talking about people building the stage, just running the 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 booth, everything. Everything just it's just money, just going. money, just going out, right. going out the. You know what I'm saying? The stage hands, they're union. You got to yeah. pay them. So let Erica show up late, cause baby, they back there like, hundred and fifty times seventeen million times forty nine divided by three. Right. We about to get money from this bitch. Come on late, right? Like you know what I'm saying? Like the even with private planes, we right. don't have no pilots. Right. We need to own our own plane. Right. We need to have our own flight attendants. So right. you know who's picking? Who has the transportation service? Right. It's, it's just so... And, who's printing t-shirts? Who's doing merchandising? Right. Who's printing backstage? Who's printing tickets? Like, all of that. It's just like a whole and facet of things. That's good to know because, like, you know, as the artist or the artist band, they're on tour with that artist. But once that artist stops, you still got another show tomorrow. You got an, It's always somebody coming to these venues. So always. be backstage. Yeah, that's... Always, That's good. always, and I don't yep. even. I, I, if you talk to kids nowadays, they don't know nothing about a union house. What's the difference between a union right. house and a regular house? Like that's where you know those are the things that need to be taught to them. The financial piece of it, the agent. Right. right. My my um godmother was the first black booking agent. Her husband was an original ink, ink spot, and my wow. godmother was able to get her name is Ruth Bowen. You can look her up. And if you you look at her, the reason why she was able to get into business because she was light skinned with green eyes, so they thought she was a white girl. So the mafia right. let her in because that was mafia ran right. in the sixties. You know what I'm saying? She was like she was the one who brought Earth, Wind, and Fire, and like all of the real people back in the day. My my godmother, she had Crown Booking, um, Diana Washington, all of those kind of people right. back in the day. She had my my aunt and all that. Like um, there's just so much money to be made on the other side of things that um. People fail to miss. They they just, you know, 
They right. just don't know. They just think the only way you can get the money is to stand up there and sing. Right. You know, LeBron is a classic example. He put all his boys through school. You're going to be the accountant. You're going to be the agent. Mm. You're going to be the finance man. You're going to be the broker. Yeah, you're going to be the car. Right. You, so everybody played a part. And if we did that more, then we would we we would be able to grow a greater nation. And you know mm. how we always say, oh, well, how come Jay-Z and all of them don't pull their money and do X, Y, and Z? Right. Even if they pull their money, they still got to trust the white man to right. divvy it out to and to invest it. And do, because there's right. not someone that's playing every piece of this in right. order to make it communal and stay within our community. Right. So, yeah. I want to, too, uh, say thanks for talking to the community in Highland Park uh, when Chuck D and oh, yeah, Dilla yeah, yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was a fan. Yeah, yeah that's what's up. <laughs> I am hip-hop. Seven three, baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I up. am hip-hop. I, I want to ask you, too, um, this is my last question. Um, what, What's your favorite <clears throat> hip-hop record that, that sampled your, your auntie? So, I'm bad at this. So I don't know just the one that, who did that? Was that most Def song? Which one? You Do think? I can't afford to stop for one moment. Oh, that was, um, but it's yeah, too yeah, late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, who yeah. originally did that? That was, um, that was, that was uh, bo- uh, Booty, the, um. Nah. Yeah, that was most Def. Yeah. That was yeah. most Def. Yeah. That's what I was saying. That, that was yeah. most Def. So yep. he was the first one who I even noticed that did it. Did it. But right. I didn't know that uh, Eric B had done, <clears throat> not Eric B, um. Not Rock Him either. Uh, what's the boys? Uh, oh, third bass sample. I didn't know that. Yep, either. they gas sample. Face. Yep, they put the a gas. Face. Um, oh uh, my God, what's the, Eric Sermon? Yeah, Eric Sermon and them did something. EPMD. With, <laughs> EPMD yep. did something. So I didn't know. Yep. Like I was listening to him say that they sampled her. So I would have to delve into that. You see what right, I'm saying? Like it's right. just. I'm not Aretha expert. I'm not right. even gonna sit here and right. lie. Um, because again, she was my aunt, so I was right. the aunt aspect of it. Right. Um, so I would have to, you know, do some more research on that. Right now, I just want to, you know, what I'm saying we're gonna turn the tide a little different direction. But uh, my father had his divinity degree from Morehouse. I right. went to Catholic school. My family was uh, Baptist. My best friend was cogent. Uh, oh, cogent. Yeah. Right. They were part of that. Then I had an aunt that was Muslim. Right. So confused. Yeah. Ding, 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 that is I, right? But right now in my <laughs> life, what I've been doing is I've been looking at Judaism and the Jehovah Witnesses and the FLDC, like right. just studying the mindset of different people and how they move in the world. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And we always say, oh, the Jews are so smart, they pull their money together, they right. research it because that's not what they do. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like, So we have to start to research other things to get other perspectives and learn how other people move in order to be able to bring our community together right. and move as such. And it's not all about, oh, we're hating on each other and that kind of thing. Is that if someone has a skill that you're not accustomed to that has allowed them to create a different lifestyle, we view that as negative. We don't view right. that as, oh, let me go learn and learn. see what they're doing so I can try to figure out what they're... So um, I think one of the... Like we going back to that aspect about... Uh, the new artists, right. they don't take the time to learn and to research. They don't know who a Dinah Washington is. They right. don't know who uh, any of these, um, the, the the ladies who used to sing behind the Motown songs. Right. Like All of those things is are very prevalent when you're trying to get into this industry right. Right. and you want to know the work ethic of some of these people. These people work for years. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I have respect for Lizzo because right. she said, you know, back in the day she was working with Prince. She's been humping. She's been doing this. She's been doing that. I have respect for those who really been working and putting in the game. And then right. when you really look at a lot of the artists who really become multi, multi-generational multi artists, they right. started when they were very young. Yeah. 13, right. 14, 15, 16. They didn't just show up on the scene how we got these young people now where they just make a viral video. <laughs> <laughs> they can't you, you know what I'm saying? Like it don't, it don't work like that for longevity. Right. And now they're starting to see it. Right. Oh yeah. Now yeah. they're starting to see. It. They like, wait a minute, maybe that wasn't the best thing. Yeah. That's not gonna work for longevity. Right. So, yeah, yeah, and with the internet, it don't go away. Baby, it's, it's all. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I'm so glad. <laughs> Freak Nick on video. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> It's, it's some video out there, but it ain't, yeah, it ain't, ain't nowhere no, near where. Baby, and the mind it is in a vault. <laughs> right. about to find it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't. It, be, freak neat. Yeah. With a f- camera phone? Yeah. College with a camera phone. None yeah. of us would have jobs. No. <laughs> None of us. Wives, n- kids would be looking at you like, oh, so that was you, but you telling me to. I just shredded some old photos. See what I'm saying? <laughs> basically like, we, oh, man. <laughs> See what I'm saying? 
Yeah. yeah. So it's um, it's definitely a new world we living in, and I'm just trying to hope the kids uh, understand that even with the new, you got to know the old. Cause yeah. you know, luckily with the 50 year revival of hip hop, you know, last year everybody was celebrating. It was good to see people like LL back out there, you right. know, because for a long time LL was like, I'm not doing no old school. Right. Promoters called, nigga, I got 150 million. It's old school, <laughs> I ain't doing it. Right. That money got short. Right. So it's 50 years, right. and y'all want to pay me 2.3 million? Right. Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> Been here for years. Right. Yeah, I bet you was don't call right. it a comeback. My money got short. <laughs> Bills is coming in. That's right. what that got. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, I, the one thing I have to say is that people better recognize that people like Patti LaBelle, uh, my ma, my aunt, uh, Frankie Beverly, even though he can't sing a tune, whatever, they, they still working. Oh, yeah, yeah. You just want to hope that right. you can still work. Now, is Beyonce going to be bootylicious at 65? I don't know. Yeah, you gotta start. 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 You gotta start making some balance. You gotta do something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta. Yep. Now, now Madonna able to pull it off. Right. But she I don't know it. if Beyonce gonna be able to pull yeah. it off. You know, some of these girls, they ain't gonna be able to. Is Cardi B gonna be able to pull it off? No. No, no. Not, not at 65. I don't think. But that. Aretha and them could still yeah. do it at 65. Yeah. 80. They Salt still Pepper up. can do it. Salt Pepper. <laughs> Some pepper they ain't gonna be able to do push it though. Right, I mean, they I'm can do another up. version <laughs> of push it. Yeah, push that wheelchair. I mean, right, just like SWV really can't do downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You see That's what I'm saying? Funny. So it's you know you yeah. gotta you have to be able to you know set yourself up for longevity because this if you ain't got the longevity in this career your your bank account will be short real quick right right real quick because you know just like even with anybody else who works as we start to move up in different uh, tax brackets or your money start to change you start to acquire different things and you want to be able to keep those things right. you know what I'm saying them. but you can't maintain your forty million dollar house listen. Right. We're going to end on this note. I don't give a fuck what they say about Vivica. Right. The bitch going to get the bag. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? Car shields? Mm -hmm. Hair? I don't care. Right. How many? 100,000? I could put that on my house that I just built. Yeah. You see what yep. I'm saying? But everybody else talking, oh, well, we don't understand. Because Vivica does People everything. People think they too big for it. You but only no. do movies, baby girl. Right. And baby boy was the one we know you for. Right. It ain't Benjamin Button. Right. <laughs> Before we ended off Funky Fresh and the Flesh style, um, how many times did they change your aunt clothes at the funeral? <laughs> your face. <laughs> I don't know. I was too busy. So it they did a closure. Times, it right? wasn't the funeral. It was, so they did, what was it, two days at the uh, museum and two days at the church and then at the, so if we would have had her in the same clothes, y'all would have been talking shit. No, that was fly. That was some Detroit player. That was, she yeah. went out to Detroit Had we had her in the same thing, they'd be like, nah, that was a damn yeah, shame. Right. We could have changed her clothes. Yeah. No, but that, I mean. Yeah, because your, your, your aunt had that church audience, too. And you yeah. know how the church folks be. Yeah. you yeah. you We from Detroit. We yeah. going to talk no bad. Doubt. No doubt. She had all them clothes. Y'all yeah. know y'all could have changed yeah. her clothes more than one time. Right. But yeah, they changed her for each each day, and then she was an honorary Delta, and then at one point they put her in red oh, for the yeah. for the ceremony. You know what I'm saying? Because right. y'all would have did as bad. Now, if we could have had different hair, we would have did that as well. Right. But it was no, we had to do it queen style. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had to go out with the style and grace that y'all knew her for. You right. know what I'm saying? She's going to show up on the stage. She's going to have her purse. Yep. The purse going to have about 50000 cash money. She's going to have on her mink. Right. You can fuck around on the fuck around if you want to. <laughs> Be late or miss a cue from the stage. Uh, yeah, uh, HB, you're going to get docked uh, 250. The horns didn't sound on time yeah. on Rocksteady. <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like, well she was going to keep it 100 right. to the end. So we just had to keep it, you know what I'm saying, 100 with everybody and take around the style and grace of which everybody was accustomed to seeing her in, you know? So right. um, nothing in my life has been normal. Right. Whatever mainstream normal is, I don't know what that mm. is. So we had to keep up the 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 what we always did. Right. We appreciate you coming down, Crystal Franklin. We yeah. 
Right. But this is the I dope show the, today. For the, real. the opportunity to come. Y'all, my first podcast. Yeah, no oh, doubt. wow. Yes, Explosive. and I did a little everything. All of the TV, <laughs> all of the papers, right. all of the news Hang folks. with Jim Belushi. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Hang with Jim, 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 Jim Belushi. Right. Yeah. I even hung with Donald Trump. Mm, wow. That's a whole other story. Oh, <laughs> See what I'm part two. Yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole other wow. story, you know? Wow. So, But yeah, I got stories for days. Again, being from the D, born and raised, no doubt. Bronx no down doubt. till I die. No That's doubt. one of the biggest blessings of all. I wouldn't want to be from nowhere else in the world right. but Detroit. That's grounded me 365 degrees in my blackness. No doubt. <laughs> That's yes, 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 yes. All right. Well, we, we appreciate, uh, appreciate your time. Funky, fresh, fresh in the flesh. flesh. Give us are. respect, y'all. Yeah. <laughs>